Please stand and face the font. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear friends, this water will be used to remind us of our baptism. May we remain faithful to the spirit we've been given. Lord our God, you created water to make the fields fruitful and to refresh and cleanse our bodies. You also made water the instrument of your mercy, for through water you freed your people from slavery and quenched their thirst in the desert. The water the prophets proclaimed the new covenant you would enter upon with the human race. And last of all, through water, which Christ made holy in the Jordan, you renewed our nature in the bath of regeneration. And we respond, blessed be God. Blessed be God. Therefore, may this water be for us a memorial of the baptism we've received and grant that we may share in the gladness of our brothers and sisters who at Easter have received their baptism through Christ our Lord. Almighty God, cleanse us of our sins, and through the Eucharist we celebrate, make us worthy to sit at this table in his heavenly kingdom. Amen.
Let us pray. Let us give the Lord glory and praise in song. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We pray. Let us pray. May your people exalt forever, O God, in renewed youthfulness of spirit, so that rejoicing now in the rest restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of resurrection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter said to the people, The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and denied in Pilate's presence when he had decided to release him. You denied the Holy and Righteous One and asked that a murderer be released to you. The author of life you put to death, but God raised him from the dead. Of this we are witnesses. Now I know, brothers, that you acted out of ignorance, just as your leaders did. But God has thus brought a fulfill to fulfillment what he had announced beforehand through the mouth of all the prophets that his Christ would suffer. Repent, therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be wiped away. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
reading from the first letter of St. John. My children, I am writing this to you so that you may not commit sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the Righteous One. He is expiation for our sins, and not for our sins only, but for those of the whole world, that we may be sure that we know him is to keep his commandments. Those who say, I know him, but do not keep his commandments, are liars, and the truth is not in them. But whoever keeps his word, the love of God is truly perfected in him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord be with you. <clears throat> Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The two disciples recounted what had taken place on the way, how Jesus was made known to them in the breaking of bread. While they were still speaking about this, he stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. But they were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. Then he said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do questions arise in your hearts? Look at my hands, my feet, that it is I myself. Touch me and see, because a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you can see I have. And as, and as he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While they were still incredulous for joy and were amazed, he asked them, have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of baked fish, and he took it and ate it in front of them. He said to them, these are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and in the prophets and Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ would suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached in his name. To all the nations, beginning from Jerusalem, you are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ.
take up my glasses so I can see here. <clears throat> so first, first of all, today's reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter says, the God of Abraham, of Isaac, and of Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his servant Jesus. Jesus Christ is risen from the dead. It is historical fact, as we know that the apostles and so many others were witnesses to Christ who is risen from the dead. And so the, the, the resurrection of Jesus Christ gives us great hope. In this world that we live in, of wars, violence, oppression, all the things going on, Jesus Christ is our hope. The resurrection of Jesus Christ. When, when Jesus Christ was transfigured before Peter, James, and John, and transfig uh, sorry, transfiguration, they saw the glorified Lord. And they were amazed, and, and so that was their hope. And now they've seen the risen Christ, and the power of the resurrection was with them, and the power of the resurrection is with each and every one of us. And so it gives us the hope in day in and day out of heaven, heavenly glory and resurrection glory, to trust in our Lord in everything that we say and do. But as we know in this world, we don't live in a perfect world. We do suffer. There are many times we suffer illness and all kinds of different things, but we unite our sufferings with the sufferings of Christ. He is always with us. He will never abandon us. And again, he is risen from the dead. We need to know that in the depths of our hearts and our souls. Then it also says, God, must, God has brought fulfillment through the prophets that the Messiah would suffer. So throughout salvation history, the event of Jesus rising from the dead was fulfilled through the prophets. Yes, he would suffer and die on the cross and rise from the dead on the third day to prove that death has no power over him and death has no power over us, over us who walk and believe the Lord in our lives. Trust in Jesus Christ, walk with him. He is the way, the truth, and the life, the one and only way to salvation. And the Lord, I promised a couple of people here I was gonna say this, the Lord lives in the eternal now. We, we have a beautiful day today, as we know, and yet there's people saying, well, in a few days it's gonna be winter again. Live in the present moment. Live for this beautiful day that we have and rejoice in, in resurrection glory every day, particularly on this beautiful spring day that we're having. Uh, the the uh, second reading from the first letter of John, uh, the, it says the way that we can be sure whoops, of our knowledge of him is to keep his commandments. The way to know the Lord is to keep his commandments. And the commandments primarily are love of God and love of neighbor. Love God with all of our hearts, our souls, our strength, and our mind, and love our neighbor as ourselves. If we do that, we will be the people of love that the Lord calls us to be. Jesus Christ is love, love incarnate, and that love has been put into our hearts through our baptism and strengthened in our confirmation and that love of the Lord is strengthened every time that we receive the Eucharist. As bread and wine become the body, blood, the soul and divinity of Jesus Christ, and Christ comes into our hearts, the resurrected Christ comes into our hearts to give us the wisdom, the strength, and the peace to be Christ and to bring Christ to the world. But again, if we follow the commandments, humbly follow the commandments, we will know the Lord, again, through our love of others, praying without ceasing, being compassionate, being forgiving, and, and always seeking what is above, heaven. Heaven's our goal, heaven's our vision. It's good that we have goals in our lives, but the number one goal is heaven, where every tear will be wiped away, and we will be in the presence of our family and friends, our Lord Jesus Christ, all the angels and saints, glorified resurrection for all eternity, and that is our goal. In today's Gospel of Luke, the Lord is in the midst of the disciples on that, day, on that first day, Peace be with you, he says. And, and so, so Deacon Mike last week said it so well in his homily. Peace be with you. Peace in our hearts. Peace in our trials. Peace in everything we do. So when we follow the Lord the, the very best we can with all our hearts and souls and minds, we will be at peace so that we can bring the peace of Christ to the world. You know, when people say, how come you are so filled with joy? Because you can say, I believe in Jesus Christ resurrect from the dead. He is the way, the truth, and the life. He is, my, he is my hope. He is my savior. He is my peace. If we trust in the Lord, we'll be at peace in our lives.
Then he says later on, the Lord, look at my hands, my feet. It is really I. So the Lord is in his glorified body, but he's also still fully human, as he said in today's gospel uh, to his disciples, a ghost does not have hands and feet like I have. And so he's, he's a God of glorified body, so he looks a little different to the disciples, and yet, and yet he does, he is still fully human. And then, of course, at one point in the gospel, he says, do you have anything to eat? And so he's eating in front of him to show his humanity. It's because the Lord, the Heavenly Father, sent him into the world and, and where he is fully human and fully divine because that's how much he loves us, came into the world for our salvation and redemption. And then later on, he says, the Lord says to the disciples, everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets and the Psalms had to be fulfilled, had to suffer. So from the very beginning of salvation history, it was, it was forecast, it was, that was God's providential plan to send his son into the world in his providential time to suffer and die on the cross and to be raised from the dead to prove again that death has no power over him and death has no power over us, over us who walk and, and walk with the Lord in our lives. So Jesus Christ is risen from the dead. We are filled with joy. Let us honor the Lord in the way we live, move, and have our being. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Together, let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father for all ages. God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate with the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Confident peace and Easter hope, let us bring to the Lord the needs of the world. peace among peoples and nations in words and actions. 
we pray to the Lord. Jesus, our risen Lord, hear our We pray for our country and all who call it home. May we be united in our resolve to promote the common good. We pray to the Lord. Jesus, our risen Lord, hear our We pray for catechumens and those throughout the world. May they recognize the risen Christ. We pray to the Lord. Jesus, our risen and the thirsty. May they receive the provisions they need without judgment. We pray to the Lord. Jesus, our risen Lord, hear our We pray for an abiding respect for God's gift of human life. May we treasure the lives of all people in particular those who live on the margins of society. We pray to the Lord. Jesus, our risen Lord, hear our We pray for God's creation. May the miracle of Easter be our inspiration to create the world anew in prayer and action, cultivating a world of love justice and peace we pray to the lord Jesus, our risen lord, hear our we pray for our faith community may we be witnesses to its faith in jesus who suffered died and rose living as his hands and feet in the world we pray to the lord Jesus, our risen Lord, hear our We pray for all who have died, in particular Cliff Corin, for whom our Mass is offered. We also pray for all who have died alone. May they rest in the peace of Christ. We pray to the Lord. Jesus, our risen Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray. Faithful Lord, your risen Son fulfills our deepest longings and greatest hopes. As we come to know you better through him, show us all the ways in which you save us, all the ways in which you fulfill your promises to your people, we ask this through Christ, our resurrected Lord. Amen. Let's 
pray, brothers and sisters, my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exalted church. And as you have given her cause for such great gladness, we have also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to claim your Lord, but on this day and this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has restored our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with Paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers, the angelic hosts, sing together the unending hymn of your glory, as they acclaim. indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts, we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. 
Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving past of your son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognize the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your son and filled with this Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with the elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Helena and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in her presence we rely for unfading help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Austin Anthony, our Bishop, the order bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you've gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom we have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life. Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, to whom we bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we wait the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the risen Lord be with all of you. And Let us offer each other Easter peace.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called at the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be
We can say together the Because He First Loved Us campaign for Catholic life in the pews. O Lord, my God, teach my heart this day where and how to see you, where and how to find you. You have made me, remade me, and you have bestowed on me all the good things I possess, and still I do not know you. I have not yet done that which I was made. Teach me to seek you, for I cannot seek you unless you teach me, or find you unless you show yourself to me. Let me seek you in my desire. Let me desire you in my seeking. Let me find you by loving you. Let me love you when I find you.
Let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those you are pleased to renew by eternal mysteries, may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. We have a few announcements this afternoon. Invited to our first parish diversity celebration, we will start with honoring St. Kateri Tekuitha and Native American culture on April 17th. The sacred area in the gathering space will be blessed in a special ceremony after the 1210 Mass. See the bulletin for details. You're invited to our anointed Mass on April 20th, next Saturday at 10 a.m., with a light lunch to follow. We invite you to, to our roast beef parish dinner on April 28th at 6 p.m. in the Social Center. RSBP is required. See the bulletin for details. I now invite Dave and Nida Kranicker to come up for an announcement. We just wanted to let you know that next Saturday we are gathering in the garden. You can still go to the Mass of the Anointing. Um, all are welcome in the garden, children, elders, and everyone in between. Our goal is to provide a place for gathering and to produce organically grown food for our neighbors in need. You are invited to join us in any capacity, stand, sit, kneel, and do lots of different things in the garden and enjoy it. Our first work day next Saturday is from 12 to 3 to get the food share pots ready for planting. Throughout the season, you are invited to help us in the garden and enjoy the garden and the surrounding walking path. And we will be out in the lobby. And if you've got more questions or want to receive emails about joining us in the garden, please go ahead and sign up. And we hope to see everyone in the garden. It's for everyone to enjoy. One in seven of our neighbors is going to go to bed hungry tonight. When I was younger, that would fill me with outrage. Now it just fills me with profound sadness. So please join us. Not only do we give food, we give healthy food. And as Pope Francis said, first you pray for the hungry, then you feed them. That's how prayer works. See you in the garden. Lord be with you. Amen. Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. See you.